What's up, chess friends? Welcome back to the grind. Playing as black today. I'm still a little salty after yesterday's game ending in a draw when I had the uh, giant advantage. But oh well, that's chess. You win some, you lose some, you draw some. I haven't had a draw on the channel in quite some time, so that was different. Anyways, we're playing the Karo Khan today. We're playing Hassan from Iran. Let's see how he responds to C60, C65. English. English is hard. Okay. So it looks like he exchanged pawns on D5. It's good for me. Um, I actually prefer exchanging. Um, I tend to do worse when opponents push E5. Um, I like the faster development that this provides. I like getting the knight out to f6 and then getting the bishop out to like e7 and being able to pin this knight. It's all good things. I prefer this variation of the Karo Khan. Hmm. I don't think there's much sense in pinning at this point. I don't know if it's better to get the knight out or push e7 so I can start working on the bishop. No, no, I can't really push e6. Still want to get the light square bishop out. I think I'll just activate it. Oh, well. Castles, okay. Well, his knight is not pinned. Never mind. Okay, how do we want to play this? Mm, I imagine at this point we probably just want to play e6 to get the bishop out. The one problem that I have had in this particular setup when the opponent gets a bishop, a light square bishop on this setup, is that sometimes I'll get my b7 pawn sniped and then I'll end up losing a rook. So what I'm going to do is be a good citizen and get the rook out to b8 and just get the rook off of the same diagonal as his light square bishop. I know it's not a threat yet, but it's just something common that's happened to me and I don't want to lose the game over it. <laughs> that makes sense. I think one move that I'm kind of tempted to play is going something like queen d7 and just offering the trade of bishops here. Um, he has like a very strong structure around his king, and I think anything that I can do to just sort of like weaken it is a good thing. This will also allow me to get the knight out onto like e4, for example. So I don't know what's better here, like trying to go for that really early trade or just castling fast. Hmm. Yeah, if I push up e7, I'm basically committing my bishop to this side of the board. to the king side. I'm just going to de delay e6 by like a move or two. Hmm.
I think I'm okay to stack the F pawns if he wants to take the knight here. Could also just try to move it out of the way too. But I don't know. I think trading these this bishop off here is going to be a good thing. See, I think all my pawns want to end up on light squares. So I'm kind of okay with trading the light square bishop off. I'm just I'm just gonna go for it. We'll find out if this is the right move at some point. He does go for that. Okay. Kind of obligated to stack here. Maybe this queen move is a waste of tempo. I don't know. But we'll find out. Actually, the nice thing about f6 is that he can't really move his knight anywhere. Well, he could go like h4, but... Um, okay. I think it's almost better to just block in with the knight here. So if we do trade off, let's think about this. Could also just, no, I can't really trade queens. He's got two attackers. Hmm, do I just have to trade with the bishop? I don't want to lose a dark square bishop though. Hmm. I want the dark square bishop, that's the thing. And also, if I were to move it away, it removes a defender. Like, if I were to capture this bishop, or if he captures this bishop, I take back. Uh, I guess it would still be okay. I guess I'd have to just move my queen back and then castle so I can get the dark square bishop out of the way. I think this is a forced move and it's a developing move as well. The king is still protecting the bishop here, so. Where's he headed? Boom takes, boom takes. I think I'm sort of just forced to play this get his king out yeah so if he takes this pawn uh there's going to be two threats on the bishop here so if he takes i can't really take back because i'm losing a bishop this way so i think i have to let me think My bishop's still pinned. I think I have to bring the knight in. Let's think here. E5 takes, takes. You can win that pawn. I don't think we've really solved much. Let's see. Maybe I just have to give this pawn up or something. No, I can't really give the pawn up because, uh, well, he's going to probably be looking for the fork. 
Hmm. Maybe I just push this pawn up. If he wants to trade, then I can attack his queen. Maybe that's the idea. Just push the pawn up, I think, honestly. I'll push the pawn up and then castle. This seems okay. Now he can't really go to d5 because it's protected. d5 also pins his knight. Hmm. It's not the worst time to castle, right? No, I need to keep a, a defender on this pawn here. Hmm. I wonder if there's like a case to be made against or uh, for castling long. I don't know. Maybe going for the knight trade and then fixing the pawns on e5 is the idea. Or is at least one idea. Can attack his queen. Attack the knight? No. Maybe just offer the knight trade here. I kind of want to get the rook out into the open file too. Like both of these rooks. This one's very inactive. Yeah, he's only got two attackers on the pawn, which is like not the end of the world. I also have two defenders. So I think honestly what I'll do Put a rook out in the open file. The rook's very inactive here on a8. That's sort of one of my weaknesses, is just not developing pieces. I'm trying to get better about that. Now this uh, d4 pawn has three defenders. One more than him. What's it going to be? What could he play here? Could try attacking the queen. Could like try removing a defender. Uh, I guess if he attacks, I just take on c5 there. Maybe just sliding the rook out onto e1 is like his best bet. I 
or even going something like rook d1 maybe is even a decent idea for him at this point. This is quite the load-bearing pawn here on d4. <laughs> the pawn has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Okay. I'm almost tempted to try to like attack his queen or just start going for the trade here. I'm also tempted to go e8 just to add sort of one more rook on an open file. I think that's going to be valuable. I'm guessing he might push b5 next, at which point I'll just play e5. Hmm. Not sure what's more valuable at this point. e8. Getting the rook more active or going for the trade here? I'm just going to play e8. I don't know. It just seems good to have... Two rooks on two open files. I don't know. It just seems okay. I think regardless of what he plays next, I'm just going to play knight e5. So we can trade off, and then um, the f-pawn can sort of support the d-pawn here after the trade. And obviously if he doesn't take, I'm I'm actually willing to... Let's think. I could trade, but then I'm just going to win. Well, it's going to be... Yeah, I'm going to be... Uh, it's going to be an even trade. Right, so... Probably now is a good time to play. E5. What I like about E5 is that it's going to force his queen, most likely, to go to E2. So his queen will end up on uh, F3 there. And his king will be in like a not so great uh, spot. So at this point, we can take this knight. I wonder if there's something more damaging I can do here. Mm, I don't know. This seems pretty good. I could offer the queen trade here. Taking with the pawn seems good too. He is. It's going to be an even trade at this point. I do like that these pawns have the potential. I honestly almost even wonder if like f6 is the idea. Hmm. Yeah, the queen trade is really tempting. What am I really gaining out of that? I'm not really gaining much. I don't know. It's probably just a no-brainer to play this. He's got twice as much time as, as me, so I need to just play a bit faster.
Spending the night here doesn't seem like the worst thing ever. Maybe I can get my bishop out into a better square while this knight is pinned and then just put pressure on e4 with like queen d5 or something like that. Okay, interesting. So he wants to go for the, the trade. Um, do I want to go for the trade though? That's the thing. <laughs> kind of like where I'm at. Mm. So what I'm losing by doing this is... I'm going to be losing the a7 pawn if I trade here. So I'd almost rather let him take just so I can push my rook up and then have the pawn protected on a6. So I'm actually just going to try to kick his queen and try to exchange on d7 just so I don't lose the a pawn here. Yeah, this is good because if we would have traded, he could have just slid his rook onto my sort of seventh rank. Okay. Tempted to stack these. Could always get a rook out on the open file as well, but I guess they are on open files already, so. And the position of this knight sucks. Sucks for me. It's great for him. H6 seems like a move I kind of need to play at some point. Why? Just so I don't get back ranked. Yeah, I'm not super sure what to do in this position, if I'm being honest. His knight's kind of defending all the places that I want to put my bishop. So maybe I just try to offer the trade here. I'm just going to play a safe move. I know it's a bit passive, but... Maybe I just start looking to trade off or something. I wonder if it's time to just try to kick his knight. F5. I'm just going to try it. It seems like the most threatening move right now.
Yeah, at this point, I basically just have to play fast. It's kind of a gist. So his knight is a bit pinned here. More than a bit, actually. Ah. That's a good move. I think I should have pushed that pawn up first. Hmm. Hmm. I do have a check, and then I could win his knight. Hmm. How much do I care? I just feel like the bishop's going to be better here. Maybe I'll just play that next. Yeah, if I play e2, he can always block in, but I'll be happy to trade off. Ah, missed that. <laughs> missed my chance. <laughs> I kind of just have to play fast here. Just playing very slow. I can still push up, push up pawn g4 here. Maybe he goes back. To d2, and I can still look for that same fork. He might be best served trying to like trade off on e1 or something. He's got two defenders on e1, so I think he would come out ahead on that trade. Probably the most even game I've played in a while. Also, I want to just get these. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's what I was looking for. That wins a knight. Probably a pawn, too. I think he'll probably trade. Yeah. That's fine. I have a really juicy check on e3, if I can get my bishop there. I'm pretty sure he'll move by then. I think if I go g5, he'll probably maybe see the threat on d2 and just push a bishop over to try to protect it. But I can go for the check, it's protected by d4. Um, and then I can still kind of take his knight. It almost might even just be worth it at that point. Mm. Oh well. Uh, so he's going to protect that way. Okay. Uh, let's see. He'll probably look for... I can't quite go there. I'll just attack his rook. F6 is very forkable. I need to be mindful of that. Also, these pieces are kind of just asking to be forked as well. I might want to just scoop my rook down at some point. Hmm. 
Let's see if I go check E3. Hmm. That's bad. He's got three defenders here. I don't really want to do it. I could try to trade off and try to win with the bishop. It's going to be really difficult. Um, I'm going to just try to break his pawn structure here. You have a check. Check and then I can move my rook. Maybe that's better. So I do have another check here, but I don't really win anything from it, it's the problem. Kind of pin his knight this way. Uh, this pawn's kind of undefended at this point. Uh, I kind of messed this one up. Yeah, if he gets a check on me with the knight, there's a decent chance I'll be losing this rook. Please don't find the check. <laughs> it's a bit of a risky move. I'm losing a pawn here. I didn't quite think this one through. His knight is more or less pinned here. And then if I can go f6 check, that would be nice. Yeah, okay, so I saw that. It's fine. Maybe that's not fine. Maybe I miscalculated that. Oh no, I think I'm just losing here. Oh no, this is bad. Ah, uh, this is bad. Ah, man. I think I miscalculated at the end there. Oh, this feels really bad. Ah. Damn, this sucks. Uh. Yeah, this is pretty GGable. Damn. I screwed up. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. Really messed this one up. Oh, it feels bad. Need to figure out where this one went wrong. I thought I was getting somewhere. Hmm. I think giving up, what was it? The D pawn was not great. 
Also, maybe that check and letting him take the G-pawn was pretty bad. Yeah, I kind of screwed up. Dang. Man, that's rough. Feels bad. Feels very, very bad. Dang. I'm basically just playing for stalemate here. Uh, I know it's unlikely that he'll get a stalemate here, but you never know. Man, where did it fall apart? I think sacking the bishop was not the right idea. Hmm. I'll have to look at the analysis on that one. It was very even up until whatever happened. Yeah. Yeah, GG, man. He played well. He played well. Let's look at the review. Yeah, he played really well. He only made one blunder. Made zero blunders, but I played a miss and like a bunch of mistakes. Lots of inaccuracies too. Looks like white made one blunder. I don't know. That's just hmm, this position here. This was a blunder, was it? And then what? F5? This is so good, huh? Knight c3, okay. Oh, so his knight is basically trapped at this point. Uh, I miscalculated that. I thought for some reason after he took the pawn, I was going to be losing the a pawn. Yeah, I screwed that one up pretty hard. Oh, wow. So f5 would have been a really good move because his knight is basically trapped. Huh. So no matter where his knight goes, he's losing his knight. Yeah, because the bishop's guarding here, bishop's guarding here, and then the pawn's guarding on c3. Oh, wow. Wow, so I should have just traded queens off, man. He gave me a really big chance there. I just didn't take it. Okay. Well, let's just take it from the top. That was kind of the key position. Okay, all good moves so far. Starting with the queen. Oh, sure. Hmm, something like that. Yeah, that was not a bad idea. Smart engine. You block the check from an opposing queen. Okay. Threatening to tactically win a pawn. Okay. Now, so kicking the knight at this point was the idea with f5. I ignored f5 for too long. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to f5 long enough. Ah, uh, yeah, taking with the queen here. That was on the radar for a while. I What I was thinking was that these pawns would sort of meet at some point. But yeah, taking, taking that way was the idea. Oh, really? Oh, sure, so leaving the pawn structure intact and then just taking with the rook. Yeah, that was the idea for a while. I guess this is good because it sort of attacks... Well, no, it doesn't even attack the pawn, really. He just has to protect his knight here. Right? Yeah, so he just protects. I can't take the pawn. 
But then I could play f5, right? And now he's forced to go somewhere. So he has to go to like c3. And now I could take the pawn. Or even then, this pawn is hanging now too. So e4. Sure. Now where's he going to go? Rook e2. Protect the pawn. Gotcha. Yeah, so some missed ideas here. Taking with the queen was the idea. Uh, I'm really bummed about not noticing this, though. Hmm. That's, a, that's a really, really nice line. This knight on e4 was just giving me grief the whole, the whole sort of middle, middle game. Eventually I found knight e5, or, uh, excuse me, f5. It was just way too late. Ah. I wonder. No. Even that's just really bad. Even that's bad, huh? Found a safer square. Why is e3 so good? Can't he just protect with like rook d1 here? And then what? Rook c7? Okay, knight e1. Okay. Is that his best move? Oh, knight e1. Okay, okay. Rook c3. Mm, I see. Rook b1. Gotcha. And then h5. Sure. This is getting into like very engine heavy, unnatural moves. There's one position that I'm just really curious about. Yeah, this was just not the idea, huh? What I figured with g4 was that getting the bishop onto g5 sort of pins the knight and then i was hoping to try to do something there but it just didn't seem like the idea looks like this is kind of where it started to fall apart Knight c4 is an inaccuracy that allows the opponent to take an open file with the rook it does doesn't it yeah this one move i felt like swung the game in a really poor favor Mm, sure. Yeah, I kick the knight this way, sure. Knight a3. Um, shouldn't I like push up here? Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Knight c2. Okay, that's good. King f7, sure. Okay. So some missed ideas there. F4, you lost control of the equal position, and now you are worse. Yeah, it was very equal up until this point. <laughs> but this was just not the move. I think the problem with this is that it gave up the G pawn, essentially. You missed an opportunity to punish a mistake. This per permits the um, opponent to take an open file with a rook. Isn't that what I ended up doing? No, I didn't. Should have, though. I should have pinned his knight here. Hmm. Couldn't I take at this point? Oh, check this way. Mm. Yeah, he'd have to go defend the rook, right? Oh, wow. So he had a lot of chances for blunders here. Okay, so when in doubt, take the open file with the rook. <laughs> Whoops. So, one move too late. Found a safer square for your rook. Hmm. This exchange here was just not the play. <laughs> oh man. Let's see what the ev eval bar says here. So still not great, but I am attacking his rook at this point. 
So he just defends. Uh, let's see, rook h7. Sure, so now I can take his pawn essentially. Rook e2. Okay, so he defends there. Hmm. Yeah, basically all fell apart in sort of these. What is that? Six moves or something. Yeah, giving, I, I guess, I guess when I look at this position, what I should have done is just taken a tally of the board. He had one extra pawn on sort of my queen side, and he had one more pawn on the king side. So this piece was going to uh, promote really easily. This pawn was going to promote really easily as soon as uh, the D pawn is gone. So yeah, it was just a big miscalculation in these moves here. I think I should have fought harder to try to um, protect the bishop and especially the rook. Um, yeah. And probably I should have gotten my king into the mix sooner as well. Yeah, once we got into this position, there was really just no hope. Uh, his king was going to take care of these two pawns here. And yeah, it was basically over um, from this point. He just had the huge advantage in the middle game. So, or excuse me, in the end game. But yeah, Hassan, 1728 from Iran. GG. Thanks for the game. And uh, thanks guys for watching. And I need to go do some studying. See ya.